In this video, you'll learn all about the pandas group by function, as well as what split, transform, and combine really means. Let's dive right into it. If you want a bit of a refresher on pandas, be sure to check out the previous videos in this playlist to be able to learn more about pandas itself, as well as the dataset that we'll be using for this video. If you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. The pandas group by function makes it incredibly easy to work with tabular data, group it by a certain variable, and then apply different functions to it. All of this depends on the split, apply, and combine method. Let's take a look at what this actually means. Okay, so first we're going to take a look at how to split, apply, and combine your data. The first step of this is split which means that you'll be splitting your data into groups based on some criteria, usually a variable. After that, you'll apply a function to each group independently. Finally, the entire combination of data frames will be recombined into a single resulting data structure. Let's take a look at a simple example to see what this actually looks like in action. So we'll start off with a small data table where we have a name column and an amount column. Each of these rows contains a different transaction carried out by a person. So in the first record, John spent $10, in the second one he spent $15, and so on. If we want to split by the name column, what Pandas will do is create two resulting data structures for each of the different categories within the name column. So we can see here that we now have two distinct data structures, one that only contains names of John and one that only contains names of Jane. If we had three names, then it, there would be three data structures and so on. Next, we apply a different function. So for example, if we wanted to know what the average amount spent by each person was, we would, com we would apply the average function to each of these different data structures. Finally, all of these resulting data structures are combined into a single data structure which looks like this, where you have the name of each person as well as the average amount spent. Okay, let's see how to actually do this in Pandas now. To get started, I've already imported Pandas as well as NumPy. I've also loaded the same data set that we've used in our other tutorials into a data frame called DF. Now, if you're not familiar with it, I strongly recommend checking out the other tutorials, which cover off in a lot more detail what data is actually contained within this data set. But let's explore just the first couple of rows. So we can write df head just to print out the first five rows. We can see here that we have a number of different columns. Specifically, we have the major category column, which groups different majors together. And then we have different attributes for each of these majors, such as the total number of graduates, the total number of men, the total number of women, the proportion of women to men, as well as the median starting salary for each. So like we covered off just a moment ago, the first step in the group by function is to split the data frame. In this data set, it really only makes sense to split our data frame by the major category column, as that's the only one that actually has repeating values. Every other column contains only unique values. So to split a data frame in pandas, we can assign it to a different object. So for example, we can call this object group, followed by an equal sign, and then we'll write df group by, and then we'll list the column that we want to group this by. So in this case, since we only have one, we can just pass in a string. Now when we run this, nothing's returned but that's just because we've only assigned the group by object into the variable group. Now if we print this out, we can see here that it returns really nothing of value to us other than that the actual group by object has been created. This group by object has a number of different attributes as well. So for example, if we wanted to see the different groups that exist within it, we could write group and then groups. Now when we run this, we can see all of the different groupings that exist, as well as from the original data frame, the indices of each of the different items that fall into that group. So for example, biology and life sciences has items belonging to index 35, 42, 47, and so on. Now, what if you wanted to know more about the different items other than their index belonging to each of the different groups? Then you could use the get groups method. So we can write group.get group, and then you would pass in 
one of the different groupings identified here. So for example, if we wanted to look at the health group, we could simply write this. And now when we run this, all of the different rows belonging to the major category of health are returned. Now, this has only taken us through the very first step of actually looking at it. We've only split the data set so far. Typically, the apply and the combine steps are done in one. A lot of the background work you don't actually see and Pandas just does in the background. One of the most approachable methods by which we can analyze our data is the size attribute. What this does is it applies the size function to each of the different groupings and tells us how big that group is. So to get the size of each of the different groups, we could write group.size and we'll write the two opening and we'll write the two parentheses. When we print this now, we can see that for each of the different categories, Pandas has told us the amount of different items belonging to this group. Now, what if you wanted to know just the size of a particular column within that group? So for example, if we wanted to look at the size of the share women group within this, we could write group and then use the dictionary accessor here, share women dot size. There is a different way of writing all of this out, which you might see in different online tutorials where you don't typically assign a variable directly to the group by object immediately. So what we could write is df.groupby, and then just like we did before, major category, and then our variable, and then size. This returns the exact same thing, simply because all of this had previously been assigned to the variable group. Now you might be wondering what other functions you can use. One of the most useful functions is the max function, which will return the maximum value within each of the different categories. So for example, if we wanted to look at the maximum median starting income, we could write group median dot max. And this returns the maximum starting median income across the different categories of majors. There are many different aggregation functions that you can use, but some of the main ones include mean, which returns the mean of all of the different groups, sum, which returns the sum of all of the different group values, size, which computes the group size and we've already covered, STD for standard deviation of all of the different values within the groups, and var, V-A-R, for the variance of different groups. I'll post a link in the description where you can learn about other methods that you can use. One of the very helpful features of the group by method is that you can actually use multiple different aggregation functions within it as well. So for example, if you wanted to know the maximum, the minimum, as well as the mean values belonging to different major categories, you wouldn't have to run that three times. You could do that within a single line of code. In order to do this, you would write group median.agg and then you would pass in a list of all of the different functions that you want to apply. So you would write np max, np min, np mean. When, when you print this, it will return the, the max value in one column, the min value in another, as well as the mean within another column for all of the different major categories. Okay, you've learned quite a bit in this video. You learned how to group data in Pandas and then apply different functions to it and combine it back into a resulting data frame with your analysis. As an extra challenge, let me know how you would find the major category with the highest proportion of women. Let me know in the comments how you would do this. If you have any questions about this video, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to answer it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button if you haven't yet, click subscribe to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.